When it comes to arc, turret towers are a key structure to have at your base for defense. So we proudly present our unrateable six layer two x two turret tower design on arc. Right before we get into this video, I just wanted to say that our server's OC launched this summer for Season 1 on PC servers, not Epic Games, only for Steam, not for Windows, please know that. Here are all the stats. But anyways, we have a total of 700 members now, which is insane, so feel free to go join and then become a beta tester today to get free perks on server release. Hope to see you there. What's going on guys, it's the Outcasts, and this may be our best turret tower we have ever designed for arc it's not too big not too small just about right this is racer proof um, basically c4 proof this thing is mech proof almost and by proof we just mean it takes a very very long time to break in as you can see on the top we have done a design that almost no one has done before which it's a cryo fridge roof meaning if somebody was to stego drop to try to break in, because I notice people do that a lot, they can't because it takes 20 C4 per cryo fridge. So that's forcing them to have to go in through the bottom. If we ghost in here, we have a total of six layers. This is our backup jenny, by the way, which powers all the heavy turrets. So if the tech turret goes down on the bottom, we still have one more jenny up top. We have, I think, four of these layers of nine vaults right here, meaning if they were to demo the whole thing, it would just vault drop all of the vaults on top of the generator basically making sure nobody ever gets to it and as you can see on the bottom here we have a cryo fridge layer which is two on each little area which rounds up to about 40 c4 or more depending on if it messes up that's 40 c4 just through that part not to mention the entire the entire vault wall and the double layered uh double walls on there and it's kind of crazy but anyways let's get on to the materials Let's go ahead and begin by using a 150 perfect tame racer. And as you can see by the stats here, first of all, we have an armor with about 50 armor. It's a mastercraft, and then we have about 50,000 health. This is the official racer, or you know, maybe up to like one like mutation on it or something. But this is an official spawned racer with official turret, and this is how fast that it dies from turrets. So as you can see, uh, the Razor died pretty quickly. But yeah, so uh, let's get right on to the C4 count on how long it takes to blow into this tower if you can manage to soak it. So for this, we're going to be doing a very long time lapse. And if you guys want to, you guys can slow it down and count the amount of C4 for yourself. But it's a lot of C4. So if you guys don't care to watch this, just go skip to exactly 417. That is after the this thing will be over and then... I'll show you to the inside of this, but this is sped up by a thousand times. <laughs> this thing took a lot of C4 and it took exactly, I think, 176 C4 just to get to the generator. That's if you do it right, too, because there's a certain way to do it. If you do it wrong, you, get, you can vault drop all the vaults above it, causing a giant pyramid over the generator, making it very hard to break in. But anyways, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to leave a like if you're new and hit that subscribe button and also go comment something like, OCTT for like OC turret tower. Just comment something like that and I'll heart it. Don't forget to go check out our servers. Kind of using this time to just plug some stuff because I mean, I don't really know what to talk about. We're moving too fast for me to even comprehend what's going on. But as you can see right here, after breaking in, we finally got into the generator and it's at 600 health and we've destroyed a lot of vaults in this time. And if you come in here, yeah, it's still hard to break in. So I just went ahead and just put three more down to make sure it fully blew up this time. And once it blew up, it was down. Oh yeah, that's right. The heavies are still up because we still have a backup generator up top. So I decided to just move on and use a mech. And now even with a mech, it still took about 10 minutes to even get rid of the entire tower. And that was not even including the vaults because all the vaults basically made a giant pyramid as you can see here. 
and I eventually gave up. I was just getting tired of hitting this thing over and over again. But it took about 10 minutes to destroy this, and if you have a ton of these things around your base, it's gonna be insane for people to try to figure out how to raid all of them, try to get to your main base. So I recommend building a lot of these. The cost is a little expensive, but overall, it's worth it. So anyways, let's get right on to the design. Let's begin by layering the foundations. To, to do this, place a basic little thing like this, and then go ahead and move one over, put a pillar, and then it should be able to drop it down one. Now I go ahead and pick this stuff up, put it over there so it's even with that, and then I'm do the same thing again, and layer it down one more foundation, like this. Well, if I can get there, we go like that, and this will be the total of our three-layered foundation base for the thing. Now let's combine them all. To combine them all, just build a little horizontal thing of them all going into each other, and it will allow for the foundation to be layered up to three times. Now, instead of making our two by two foundation base, make an outline of a two by two foundation base right here with your foundations. This should be on the highest layer of the foundations. Now get your cryo refrigerators and place them on the outline like this. This is gonna basically make it so that they are on the ground, um, making sure that people have to blow them up to get to the center, to get to blow up the generator. But go ahead and do this all the way around. Just be careful when it comes to here. You do not wanna accidentally delete your foundations. So what I did here is I went ahead and after placing them down in one foundation area, I went ahead and moved them over to that foundation area to where it's covering those crowd fridges. And then as you can see here, I did it right here, but you have to make sure you have to get every single one of them in here. It's a little tricky, but once you get it, it should work perfect. You just gotta keep layering them over and then delete those, put some more crowd fridges down and then fill it all in with the three layered foundations. After you're done, it should look something like this. Now go ahead and get to the lowest foundation base that you can. For each one of these, it's a little tricky to get it. And then go ahead and then triple layer this one layer around the two by two. Now, before we go any farther, make sure to place your walls on this lowest foundation part right here. Let's make it harder for them to destroy the walls and make sure that it is the closest that it can. So that it is on the outer foundations and not the inner foundations. And before we start layering, let's go ahead and build the walls up 10 high. Next, after that, go ahead and build outside of this little 4x4 and go ahead and make it an 8x8. But make sure that these foundations are the lowest that they can be. You can choose to triple layer these if you really want to. I didn't as it's just a lot of time wasted and a lot of foundations wasted. As these are going to be getting destroyed anyways. But this is just to help to stop the uh, racer rating. Because if you know racers, they can easily outline of slide the turrets. So we're just going to go ahead and make it racer proof by doing this. After you're done, it should look something like this. Anyways, now that the walls are done, come inside. And then come down here and then go ahead and layer your cryo fridges with one more on top of it. Of course, this is only going to work for official, unofficial, not official. Oh God, this is definitely not going to work on official, but this is only working on unofficial servers. And this basically makes it to where they have to either blow up the foundations that it's on, which are triple layered, or they have to blow up the both of the cryo refrigerators, which equals a total of 40 C4 per little area for a person to get through, which is a lot of C4 already off the start. Next, go ahead and place your vaults in this weird, like, diagonal kind of pattern that we did here. It's a little weird, but this allows for the tech jenny to be hidden away from the outside, and then go ahead and put your tech jenny on the foundation right in between. After that, make sure to cover this whole thing with ceilings, and then now we're going to do a layer of 9 vaults. After you're done, it should look something like this. Now go ahead and fill this and do the same thing again. Now that this one's done, go ahead and cover it and do the same thing again. Now go ahead and cover it one last time and this top layer is going to be our cryo fridge layer and our backup generator layer. So for this, go ahead and put an electrical generator down and then do the wiring, the wiring however that you want. I only used like two cables and then a flexible cable to combine them and it powered every single heavy on the tower which is kind of crazy. But yeah, go ahead and place it right here. Uh, it's going to clip through this top layer. But go ahead and leave one open so you're able to access this. Go ahead and place your electrical cable like this if you want to do it on my design. So go ahead and place it like that. And then go ahead and get your vertical cable and connect it to the generator. And then get your flexible cable and then connect it down here. 
Once it's connected, do not put your outlets down. Make sure to put your all of your turrets down first and then put your outlets down. Because there's a glitch with the arc if you put it down after it powers more turrets. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the top layer of hatch frames. This will just make sure that we have some kind of turret defense while working on this tower. So nobody comes and just like, you know, tries to kill you while you're working on it. So I've noticed that's happened a lot. And a lot of you guys want different styles of like building this. So basically building it step by step. So I decided to go for that for this whole build. So now for this, go ahead and get your turrets and we're going to put tech turrets on each corner and then in the middles like so. So here they are, put them in each corner, all four corners like this. And then go ahead and then put them in the middle right here on each side. Next, go ahead and place your heavies like this on each one of these corners. Just put them next to the tech turrets. And then make sure don't do that like I did there. Don't accidentally misplace a tech turret. But I went ahead and just put two in between each because you always need more heavies than tech turrets. Now that this is done, put down your outlets and now it's time for, for the cryo fridge part. Now you may be asking, why are you putting cryo refrigerators on the top? And well, each one of these take 20 C4, meaning if somebody tries to stego drop, they have to blow up these just to get through the turret tower. Not to mention all the vault layers that they have to go through basically forcing them to have to go through it on the bottom instead of the top. So notice with my old designs, they've been very weak on the top. People can easily blow into them. I had a lot of complaints, so I'm like, well, we need a different turret tower. But here's the design for it. Very simple, you know, all like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and place cryo fridges in between each one of these. It's gonna be five, four, five, four, kind of like that pattern with the cryo refrigerators. If you can't afford it, only do these for now. People can still not break in through this. But I recommend doing this because it makes it even harder for them to even get through the, the top layer. Now it's time to do the vault layering. The vault layering, we always want to do that first instead of put the hatch frames down first so then there's no interruptions with them falling on top of a hatch frame. But to do this, it's very simple. We're going to place five on two sides and then fill in the middle with three. It's a very simple design to do and it works very well. It's just extremely time consuming and I've highly recommend using a quetzal for this part. Now you can either stop here or keep going. Stopping here would still allow you to use this turret tower and it's very functional, keeps it a little cheaper, or you can keep going to the full design. So for the rest, I went ahead and put double door frames right here just to stop the racer rating. This basically makes sure that people cannot uh, put a box on a racer and then just walk up to the wall and blow it up. This will keep it back to where turrets actually shoot inside of the racer, killing the players. So to do the layering, you're going to have to place ceilings like this. Make sure you put four and then just do the same thing that you did and then go ahead and delete the ceilings every single time so that they fully vault drop. It's very simple. You do that until you're fully built all the way up to the top. It's very expensive though. I think this design calls for 129 vaults, I believe, which is very, very expensive. So if you are not prepared, do not use this design. This is another warning. Do not use this if you do not have enough resources. And now for the hatch frames, go ahead and skip three walls and then put a hatch frame and then do that again. Now to, to build it over top of the vaults, you're going to have to put them down over, here, over on here where there's no vaults first. And then you have to kind of expand it over so that they snap to it, making it for an easier placement without you having to go into the tower, mess around with all that. And then you can go ahead and just get rid of these after you are done. After all the vaults are down, it should look something like this. Now come up top and put a giant trap door over this to add an extra layer. And then I went ahead and put some bear traps, you know, just to stop stego dropping so that they get stuck in the bear traps. And now you need to expand the rest of your hatch frames, and then you're almost done. Now for the middle layer, put heavy turrets only for the middle layer, as we need more heavy turrets than tech turrets. This will basically be the main feature that kills dinos extremely quickly. So go ahead and fill this whole thing with heavies, and then the bottom, just copy the design from the top hatch frames. Now for the final touches, put some heavies on the corners at the bottom just to stop some people from, you know, being able to like hide behind objects. But anyways, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you're new, hit that subscribe button, and also go comment something nice that you like about the channel. And don't forget to go check out our servers OC. But I hope you guys enjoyed and peace out. No, baby.